This is a 91 GT. It's got a Pro Charger on it. This is his baby. He used to be. <laughs> He's a little mad at his baby right now. That's how you install springs. Okay, how you feeling, Rob, right now? <laughs> Say in a second. Here we go. Oh, go! Hello, and welcome to Gearhead 704. I'm Matt, and if you've been watching the channel recently, you might wonder what in the heck is going on. We've got all kinds of stuff in here today. There's my SSP, there's Matt's FHP, which we just did a video on the channel for. And we got something else here today, guys. This is a 91 GT, and uh, yeah, this is not mine, this is not Matt's. This is actually one of Matt's friends, uh, Rob, he's over here today, and they're pulling the motor out of this car, this 91 GT, and it's not just any motor, guys. It's uh, it's a 302 heads cam intake, but it's got a Pro Charger on it. Yeah, it's got a Pro Charger on it. Let me show you guys here, it's in the box. I mean, this has got a BKX bite here. Let's take a look at this thing. Yeah, we got Matt banging stuff over there. <laughs> Motor's about to come out, it needs to be rebuilt. It actually has 351 heads on it, old school 351 heads. I think he said from like a 69. So it's got some old school heads on it. But yeah, Rob is uh, taking the motor out, got to rebuild it, had some issues. We might get into all that as well. And let you guys know kind of what happened with that, why the motor's in this state, why stuff is being pulled out. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a fun one, a little different. And yeah, let's see if they can get the motor out. I'm late today, by the way. I was supposed to be over here. It's like one o'clock. And I was supposed to be over here like, uh, I don't know, 10 a.m. So I'm running late. That's why they're already getting it done. Pretty cool though. So let me show you guys something a little different. Check it out. Let me know when it compresses a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. I mean, maybe a quarter inch. That's fine. You ever done one of these before, Matt? I've done one or two. <laughs> one or two? Yeah. We did this on the channel before, guys, too. So if you're looking for a step-by-step, -step, we did do this before on the channel. I'll throw one of those cards, throw it up there if you want to check that out. But uh, yeah coming out we actually got like three people working on the car today yeah, rob's got a friend quickness and speed yeah about an hour and a half maybe <laughs> an hour and a half when we did it i think it took like i don't know a couple days a couple weeks maybe no we got it out in like four yeah. hours it's about now, four hours now you get to see now you get to see how how quickly we can do it with yeah. the uh, training and stuff well i figured it would help that i was not here filming to slow you down <laughs> That's really why I showed up late, guys. I didn't want to actually slow them down. I'm going to give you guys a look underneath the car here before they drop the motor out. And so that is how they're taking the motor out. You know, a lot of people pull it up throughout the engine bay. <laughs> Matt doesn't do that. He drops it from the bottom. This is how they were put in from the factory. So you're kind of doing it the same way here. It's clean, clean car underneath. Long two headers. Getting the steering shaft out, I believe. Everybody's gonna give you a hard time about the oil filter then. <laughs> what, clean it? No, for am. <laughs> they don't like us. They don't like them on the internet. I don't know That's why. That's the Fram race filter. Oh, he's got the Fram race filter, guy. So it's That's not just a normal they Fram. The they, print, they printed Pro on it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's got to be better. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> we're dropping the, as we're dropping it's the body down. All right. So I'm slowing them down again, guys. Uh, I'll put you back to the time lapse. I don't know if you saw the recent video, but on my transmission, I have some decisions to make. Um, really, it's going to be very expensive to rebuild it. My gears are shot. But Rob, the owner of this car, the 91 GT, he has a Pro Charger, right? And his transmission, it's like, a, it's essentially kind of like a Z-Spec, maybe a little better. It's the Ford aftermarket one. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. It says 7003. Uh, and this is what Ford used to sell as their performance transmission. So it is a little beefier. And he has the Pro Charger. So I'm trying to get convince him to go ahead and get a better transmission for his car. And then I could buy this one a little cheaper. So we'll see. But the motor is about to come out. I remember that. That's what the motor is going to sit on. I do remember that. Do yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to work on him on the transmission. Hey, some deja vu here. Well, just a little bit every time I come here this part when the, he actually gets the motor in the car and starts it that'll be weird for me I don't know what that's like I don't know how they actually start up again I haven't had that in months they start better oh is that what your final like plan was oh I should have planned differently huh I see you, you only help your run? friends not 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 you know, not me <laughs> wanted to run yeah when we had a battery with what 0 0.044 volts oh dude yeah that was probably the worst <laughs> yeah, battery yeah how long did it take you guys to get it in here started yeah, never did, yeah, you never did. I recognize that too. Yeah, see, that's how the cars come in here. You pull them with a the van. Right. 
She's free, boys. Matt, wait, you gotta let Rob get on and push him. Oh, uh, yeah. You wanna ride it? <laughs> Be the fastest you've gone in yet. That's what you have to do here at the shop. You have to ride it. Now, look at that. What's the first thing you notice? Look how f on that back header got. Oh, and that's one of the cylinders that blew. Yep. And look at this one right here. See that? Brand new headers. They look fine except those two cylinders. So, yeah, guys, I didn't really say this yet, but the reason he's gonna rebuild it is he believes the motor is blown. That's why I got a really hot header over here. Yeah, so that's the story on this one, guys. Basically, it kind of got blown up. So, yep, I guess unfortunately. Yeah, the transmission. But it is out. Go ahead it's out. The All right, now that the motor is out of the car, Rob, Eric, and Matt, they are just working on tearing it down really quick. Uh, I am going to talk to Rob a little bit more before we close out the video, let you guys get a little bit more of the backstory of why he's having to rebuild the engine. And you're going to see this car on the channel again. So anyway, let's go ahead and get the motor torn down. Maybe I'll turn a wrench. I don't know if they'll let me in. I have no idea, but let's find out and I'll catch up with you guys in a second. Still working on the tear down here, guys, but check this out. I don't know if it's gonna show up. Let's see, yep. Those aren't supposed to be in there. We've got some coolant in there. Condensation and coolant. I know about that. Tar Heel Fox is all over that cool in the cylinder. Yeah, yeah I know about well, that, guys. Yeah, that's you've even got, better. You've got a tiny <laughs> into the crankcase somehow. Yeah, you can hear it drip. When you shut my car off, you can hear the crankcase. You just hear it go bloop right down. It's not bad enough that the oil is milky, just bad enough yeah. that his engine smokes and you get that little bit of a minute. I can drive a little more and make it get worse, I think. That's true. So, yeah, we may try that on the channel. I'm not quite sure what the problem is, just keep driving it until it completely breaks. Yeah. That, wait until it catches on fire. Wait, that'll be a good video. Wait until you have to tow it, that's when you know it's broken. <laughs> we were close already once. <laughs> They've been working quick here today, guys. Working on picking the engine up. Then you get the tranny off, get it on a stand, and yeah, no messing around. I think this took like, I think this took like five videos on my channel or something. <laughs> We're doing it all in a go today, so. Clutch is out. Might have had a little heat in this one. Just a little bit. See the hot spot, guys? Yeah, when we took this out, the clutch cable was adjusted really tight. So I oh, think, really? So I think basically what it was, it was adjusted so tight that the clutch was never fully disengaged. Like when the right, it was went always off, it touching. Engages. So it's like it's like you. It, it was like it was driving with a little bit of pressure on the clutch pedal at all times. So it causes a little bit of slippage and causes it to overheat in the groove. That that discolored spot right there, that's where the metal's actually hardened. I've been lazy. I've been doing other stuff. <laughs> I haven't been turning wrenches, so you know, sorry about that. But these guys have. You can see the motor's already up in the air. Yeah, I called it motor this time. Sometimes it's an engine. Sometimes it's a motor. <laughs> but it, the transmission's off. Everything's disassembled and they already have the k-member back in the car it's all bolted up i i know i have been slacking because you got real help i mean you got well, uh, i see what you're doing today now that it's hot out you're spending time in the ac talking <laughs> yeah, business yeah 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 i had to work another business single guy speaking of that stay tuned i'm gonna have a big announcement coming soon about something but just stay tuned to the channel but anyway yeah they got the k-member back up in here it's gonna roll out pretty soon Still got to get the engine on the stand. Still moving along here. Still goofing off like normal. So. <laughs> Has he been doing any work? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. See, look, his hands are dirty. <laughs> yeah, that's how you tell. Now, what's yours look like? Oh, oh no. Oh, is that because you just broke a glove again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, they know I do that a lot. I just broke my gloves. I'm working in the background. You guys just don't see it. So, <laughs> guys, I really was about to turn a wrench. I swear, but Rob had to bring the pizza in, so it's pizza time. So I gotta do this instead. Oh, What'd you bring us? Oh, look at this. No, you don't get any. You don't get any, Icky. <laughs> All right, time to eat. All right, guys, we're gonna do a little bit of how-to in this. <laughs> Rob's tearing the motor down there, there, so we'll get back to that in a second. But 
Matt's got a tool. They're putting uh, lowering springs back in here. I've had coilovers in my car, but this right. is a little different. I haven't seen this before. Well, basically, it's a, it's the tool you would use for uh, not just lowering springs, just but any, any spring, springs. right? Yeah, and you, it's pretty much impossible to install stock springs on a vehicle with the upper and lower insulator without using this tool. And this tool is an OTC tool. Uh, it's designed directly, specifically for the Fox bodies and it's designed by OTC for Ford, and this is what Ford used in the service department. So basically what it is, is it goes through the middle of the control arm, the middle of the spring, and compresses the spring to the control arm as one unit. So this way you don't have to worry about the spring coming loose and you know taking your head off or anything like that. Yeah, I saw you put the other side in already, and I was like, are we supposed to duck, but... <laughs> right. <laughs> I yeah, guess this, this tool makes it so you don't safe. have to do that. Okay. Yeah. So basically, this goes up through the middle of the control arm like this. So it's going to go up, you're going to have the spring on there, you're going to push this in the in the spring, in the coils of the spring, and you're going to get it over the rod. And I've got this little grommet, and it's got a pin, you can see there's kind of a notch right there. So this pin and grommet goes through like that, and that pin locks in to that plate. And that pin will go through this rod, so I'll show you how to install it real quick, and we'll install the spring. Yeah, I know a lot of guys will remove the isolators, which uh, really you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, no, it can definitely make some popping and creaking whenever your suspension is going up and down. Since this is a lowering spring, I'm going to not mess. Last time I installed it too high and it was a little trouble getting it out because the coils are a little closer together. Well, that's why I let you do that side first so you'd be ready there for the go. big moment here. <laughs> so you can see I put the plate through a coil. I ran the rod up through the plate here. I'm going to put this grommet on. It stops right there so it doesn't go any lower than that. Put the pin through to lock it into the rod, and now it's locked into the plate. So now, come over here and you do the two feet of threaded rod here. This little notch, that's the notch in the control arm that the spring sits to, that's the end of the spring. It also acts as a stopper for this plate. So you'll see what I'm talking about when I get it closer up. So we got it in the position now. We got it semi-tight to hold it in place. This plate needs to be kind of behind this little notch so it kind of grabs. Uh, otherwise, when you're, while you're tightening it, that plate can spin if it's above that. So it kind of helps stop it. Then if you come up here, you'll notice the rod goes through the middle of the control arm, through the middle of the spring. Now this plate is pulling down on that coil. So as I tighten it, it's gonna start compressing that spring. You can go quite a bit just with your hand here. All you need to do is take your He-Man sword and say, by the power of Grayskull, and you can get it, man. There you go. <laughs> All right, so now we just twist this. It's got a high load bearing right here, so it spins nice and easy. So what I do is when you get it about halfway there, if you don't preset the spring, it will actually bow out. So I try to get it bowed in. Because as you compress it, it's going to curl more and more. So you want it to curl towards the inside of the car so it goes into that perch. All right. You see how it's starting to go that way a little bit? Yeah. I'm going to want to try to get it more in the correct orientation. You see, it's almost in the place. If I push it up, it'll actually still hit the K-member a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this in the place, the isolator. I don't know if you can see it. Put the isolator on the top of the spring. See, a lot of times it's not quite going in there, but we'll go ahead and put the ball joint back together. Put the ball joint nut on. And then once the ball joint's on, and you make sure your uh, spindle nuts are tight, then you can start decompressing the spring. The control arm's laying in place. We'll just push, try to push this coil spring back into place. See, with stock springs, you usually don't have this problem a whole lot because I can go higher up on the coils. But towards the top, if I do that, once I decompress it, I won't be able to get my tool out. If you look right here, I got it pried into place. I had to put the uh, tie rod on so the strut didn't spin, and I pried against the base of the strut to push the spring into place. And now you just decompress it. And that's it. The other thing I know they're going to ask is, where can you get this tool? How much does it cost? <laughs> you go to Google, you type OTC. Here, I got the part number. OTC part number 7045B is in boy. Yep. But it's about 350 bucks. <laughs>
the last time I checked, you may be able to get it cheaper used. Yeah. But the last time I checked, they're between somewhere like two, three, three hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. if you do it a lot, it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Or honestly, <laughs> buy one, do it once, and rent it to your friends. There you go. <laughs> and there you go. Springs installed, tools loose. I just take that pin out. What I do is I spin this down now. Take the pin out. There you go. Plate slides up. Yeah, plate and slide out. You got to knock that little adapter out first. Now the plate will come out, pull the plate out, and then that'll drop to the bottom. Hey, nice catch. There you there go. You go. <laughs> Simple as that. Good and deal. That's how you install springs with the correct tool. <laughs> cool, guys. So I always like to throw stuff in like that. Uh, hopefully that helps you at home. If you have the right tool, I know there's some other tools out there I've seen before in other videos, and this looked way simpler. And Safer. And way, way safer, yeah. So let's go see what they're doing on this engine over here. Rob's about to crack this open. Take a look. How you feeling, Rob, right now? <laughs> Taking a second here. <laughs> Though it shouldn't be that bad in here unless they got a crack right down the main valley. Right. That would be a pretty pretty telltale sign of what happened. Yeah. You don't really know. This motor's kind of overbuilt and it shouldn't have blown up. It's got solid push rods in it. Uh, I believe they're they're either 5 16th solids or 3 8 solids. We'll remember that in a minute. Look at 5 16th. Yeah, we got Eric uh, from Prestige Motorsports here, by the way. So check their main... channel out if you haven't before. <laughs> it's got but... main girdles in it. I mean, it, it was a pretty healthy motor. It's 400 all horse. Or excuse me, Just on motor. horse all motor. On 306, basically. On it's a 306, a three... yeah. but an 8 Ford compression. It was built for a turbo. So, or turbo That's a lot of power for low compression, dude. <laughs> yeah, so we're figuring out why, uh, why our plugs have water on them and why other things have water on them, so. Yeah, I missed that. The plugs came out, so they have water on them too. And yep. we saw it in the cylinders as well. <laughs> yes, we're gonna take a look and we had some broken porcelain. Yeah. I'm guessing it went into okay. the animation. That's what we're thinking. Yeah. Probably got a blown head gasket, you know, based on the water. Hopefully just head gaskets. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> if I haven't said it, by the way, Rob is the owner of the car. So that's, the, I keep saying Rob, but this is his baby up here. Kinda, he used to be. <laughs> He's a little mad at his baby right now, but uh <laughs> you got an attitude problem. <laughs> yeah. Mine too. I kind of know that feeling. Mine are the same way. <gasps> cool. All right. Well, guys, we're going to tear into it a little bit more and show you guys what we can see and uh, wish you luck, man. <laughs> this is where your subscribers are going to go. He's got tools laying in the middle of the motor. He doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, no, they're used to me. <laughs> they're used to me already, so don't worry. They won't have any issues with that. <laughs> they know I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, go! Big moment. That's a good sign. That's Maybe. um a little that obvious. That wow. Wow. So that's <laughs> there's no gas material left. You can pull that is a complete blowout. Blown head gasket. For sure. Is that all? That's the question. Did you check the bottom of your head yet? Not yet. Let me check yours real quick. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the top. <laughs> I don't have any more food, you gotta go. Alright, it comes the other side. Jeez. Where's the dial? Did the dial come out with that one? Look at that one. Yeah. It looks like we got a blown head gasket on this side too, guys. Got at least two blown head gaskets. We'll let you guys know what else is going on with it. Seven Looking at the heads out. right now, guys, I just wanted to point out, it says 351 right there. There we go. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Old school 351 heads. He was checking the heads out here, yeah. just using a scraper. We've used uh -oh. on channel before. Using a straight edge uh -oh. too. Straight edge. Okay. Might have to take a break. He's got some pistons on him. Uh-oh. So guys, that's, it looks like the that, pistons. That's a valve. Oh that's yeah. That's a mark of a valve. Valve hit the piston. Found a new problem, guys, on the pistons. Is it on every piston? No. It's on, no, five, on. It's on five of the pistons. It's on. It's on all four of these and uh, number three over there. You can see it really good on this one here, right? It's right that mark right yeah, there. Yeah, this one's deeper. Oh yeah, it is. Hey, look at that. Guys, after the pizza, they've been moving quick. I already got the engine back in the car, right? Let's see, let's see. Oh no, it's over there. <laughs> the car's gonna roll out today though. I wanted to give you guys a better look at these head gaskets. What do you think? I'd say they're blown. And of course you saw the pistons too. So yeah, we're gonna find out what else is going on. I'm sure Rob's gonna go ahead and pull the pistons out of the block and gonna look at the cylinder walls and all that. So full kind of build on this will be done. Not as detailed, not as how to as normal, but uh, highlights for sure this motor will go back in here it probably will be back in there before my ssp is done i mean let's be honest almost everything will be done before my ssp <laughs> no not really i think mine will be done before matt's ssp so all right so there she is in the truck 
Got sad? Yeah. Sad, sad man, because you just put this all together, like not too long ago. Thousand miles. Ten years ago? Ten years and a thousand miles. You drive about as much as I do. Yeah. So Eric is taking the engine back with him. He's gonna, you know, hone it out, magnaflux it, it do all that that's stuff. Not, yeah, bad. Rob's gonna sell it on eBay, no, but uh, on eBay. <laughs> hey, if you sell the transmission, I'm in already. You know that. So. <laughs> You're like Eric. Where's my motor? What motor? <laughs> Eric's gonna sell. Okay. So if you guys see this block, a Ford block and primer with with uh, freshly kissed pistons. <laughs> Let me right, right. Yeah. Be sure you Fresh, check out the pistons. Slightly pist kissed pistons. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh, like <it> just a little. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, so we got the car back outside. The 306, the blown 306, is in your truck. <laughs> your truck. <laughs> Rob, it's still a little too soon. A little too soon. We know we feel bad for you, but you are making progress. So what's kind of your what's kind of your next steps on this? You think? Built this car. It was probably what 2010. 2009 before that, yeah. yeah even before that so figure that motor went together and got built with the intention of vets camaros mustangs even a viper yeah. back then you got to bear in mind like a viper was making 500 horsepower you know what i mean now different you world different world so a pro charge 306 making five six seven hundred horsepower you know it was all right we'll compete with almost anything on the road within reason yeah. so now knowing that there's hellcats and stuff out there that realistically can do zero to 60 in two seconds now yeah, even seconds. teslas all right teslas, <laughs> you know it's not the same thing to have a pro charge fox that looks mostly stock and just will go yeah. down the road sideways in fourth gear so i might actually go naturally aspirated yeah and that's where uh you know prestige is doing their own cylinder heads now they've got uh some 302 heads Tell oh you guys are okay yeah because uh again eric is from prestige he works so they have their own youtube channel so if you aren't checking that out already go ahead and do so but yeah so what we're going to do is we'll finish tearing it down we'll take it all the way down i'll bring it up to prestige we'll go through it you know the whole machine process check everything out you know i don't think it needs to be bored or anything we'll probably touch it in the home try and talk this guy into buying a stroker kit for it you know so you're in favor of the na oh yeah, yeah. absolutely i i would you know Based on the 302, the stock block, you know, putting putting a Pro Charger on it, you know, it, it's cool. But man, if you if you turn it up and you know, you know after oh. a while you're gonna want to turn it up, you know, they, they're just prone to, to issues. So yeah. what I would do is is put a 347 stroker kit in it. You know, you can make 450 horsepower. You know, get a good set of heads on it, which we can hook you up with. Always and, on horsepower too. Yeah, and and I mean it'll be. It'll be a fun ride, something that you're not going to have to have headaches with. So. Yeah. And bear in, I bear in mind, when I built this motor, exactly to what he's saying, 550, 600, right down to Main Valley on a 302. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I worked at an engine shop. It was nothing for me to put a motor together and build it. Not not working in a shop anymore, kind of went a different path. I just want to drive the car, man. Yeah. And naturally aspirated, making good power, good reliable engine shop, doing the motor stuff. Way cooler to just get in the car and enjoy the car and than wrenching on it. Enjoy Different it for what it is. <laughs> Dude, I completely agree. I've got two broken Fox bodies. One of them you saw today, and the other one's just in my garage. Yeah. Yeah. 65 grand in the car, and it doesn't even run. Yeah. So I'm done with that stuff, too. Oh, yeah. I'm it's with you. It's time to drive it, man. Cool. It's time to drive it. Well, uh, Eric, if you guys find anything else, well, we know what we had today was uh, blown head gaskets, right? Mm -hmm. And we had some valve float. It obviously lost control of the valve train at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, probably over revved or, you know. But... You know, we pulled out the one spark plug. It had a broken porcelain on it, you know, so. It's hard to say. Yeah, it is. It, but if you find anything else on it, you know, let us <laughs> yeah, know and absolutely. I'll share it with the viewers. And yeah, yeah, cool. Very cool. Well, Rob, the car looks like it will be nice one day and you, at least you're heading in the right direction. So. Yes, sir. We're trying. All right. That's the goal. <laughs> cool. Well, guys, I will update you next time. I don't know how soon we're going to get all this done, but this car will be back on the channel sometime. Thanks for uh, being on the channel today, guys. Uh, Rob and Eric, again, Absolutely, check bro. his YouTube channel out. And Rob, we hope to see you on the channel again, for sure. I would hope to see me going sideways in this thing on the channel. <laughs> That's the ultimate point. goal. And, and probably yeah. before either of my cars. <laughs> yeah. It'd be nice to line him up one day. Uh, yeah, oh, you heard it. You heard it here, guys. He knows I can't drive. That's why he probably watched that video. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Gearhead 704.